Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the West Bromwich Albion on FC24. Yes, you join me with another episode with the Baggies as we enter our second season with them. And well, if you haven't checked out the first two episodes on my channel and know how our first season went first, why don't you do that? It will only take you a few seconds. I'll be here anyway. And once you come back, let me tell you, it's more ups and downs. Because sadly, even though we were going so close to that automatic promotion fight, we lost that. And well, in the playoffs, my players got under pressure quickly as we lost out to a Leeds United at Wembley. Utterly embarrassed performance right there, and to be fair, Leeds deserve to go up, as we have got to spend another season in the Championship. And even though I do sound like it's the end of the world... End is nigh! The end is nigh! F***ing run away! The end is nigh! I'm actually glad in a way, because I didn't think my players were ready for the Premier League, so I thought another season in the Championship, get their ratings up higher, get them more matured, and under pressure, they'll be able to deal with it. And if you look at the squad, don't get me wrong, there's some good players right here. And I thought we were really, really close to missing out on automatic promotion. So, with a little bit of transfer work, maybe I can make the improvements I see needed to make that big step up into the Premier League. But as well, I do have a worry and feeling that if I get offers from elsewhere, from bigger clubs, I may not be able to turn them down. So, as you may see, the budget is £21 million. Pounds. Really good, to be fair, and I'm happy with that. So, let's see what signings I bring into West Brom in my second season. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know I like a free agent. And to be fair, I've only signed free agents in season number two for West Brom. First up, experienced left-back Max Lowe joins the club for an utter bargain, zero. Then afterwards, two regen players join the squad. Angus Anderson, a centre-back, really high-rated, and I was happy with that. Followed up by, well, I believe this is Mkhitaryan's region, Mira Shikasha. Now on to the big money signings, yeah, I'm rubbing my hands, looking forward to this, as I decided to welcome Similio Allegri to Birmingham, as I offered them a big £7 million deal for their young English talent. I did go for a loan, but they wanted me to buy them. So, I obliged. £7 million for their young English talent to West Brom. Samuel Island Jr. And don't get me wrong, Samuel Island Jr. is a good start. But let's work on the other side. And I knew this player will fit in well in my counter-attacking style football. Powerful, speedy as hell. And my God, he's good at shooting. Please welcome... To West Bromwich Albion for a feed of £6.9 million, Lint on Mania. And with the sign of Lint on, I decided to accept this offer for Jed Wallace as I got a good £10 million feed from Wolves as we said goodbye to our captain. But he wasn't the only departure as I got a knock on the door and it was from the Saudi Pro League as Al Halal made an offer I could not refuse. £16 million pounds for Josh Madger, our top goal scorer. And it didn't take me long, as I couldn't refuse that offer. And I accepted. As Josh Madger, well, he's walking out those doors. Hopefully not for the last time, but he's going to Saudi Pro League. And I thank you for your service, Josh. So I have 16 million as additional 10 million pound to my transfer feed. So I needed to think of another striker. And then I thought, why don't I raid Celtic like all the other clubs do? So I did. 9 million pounds to Brendan Rodgers for, well, from the striker from the land of the rising sun. But instead, he's coming to Birmingham instead. Kyogo Furuhashi. And as well as that, I still had a load of money to spend. And I decided to fix the defence of a new centre defensive midfielder. And the only reason why I signed him is because, well, my other one got injured for a long time period. Oh, no! And I tried my luck. £17 million. And they said, yeah, sure thing. So hopefully this is the player, the anchor in my defensive problems to help fix this team's defence. So I've gone all in and welcome the Canadian... 
Stefan Estagio. And, uh, yep, this is the squad. I know the departure of Josh Magic is going to be an utter shock, but I couldn't, I couldn't earn that offer down. We're in the Championship, they're in the Saudi Pro League. It's a big difference right there. He's going to be playing on the long sides of Cristiano Ronaldo. I've got to say as well, looking at this squad, I've created a monster. I better get promotion in this season. If not, I truly do deserve to get sacked. You know what? Let, instead of me admiring this squad, let's go to the match highlights. So we unleash this monster of a squad on our first victim, I mean opponent, and that was Bristol City. I'm not here to dilly-dally or what. We've got to get wins, and no matter what, we've got to fight for that promotion spot. And one of our creations, or signings I should say, Linton Mania, well, he was on the ball. All by himself, caused an utter chaos and assisted it to the Swift. And literally, a few minutes in, the squad felt amazing. And especially with Samuel, as he decided to get part of the action. Whipped in a corner, and that, well, that was an okay header. As our new captain scores. Doubling our lead, but Linton, well, he decided to go for a little solo run and, well, made the Bristol City defenders look utterly ridiculous. Sealed in a third goal. Literally leaving them frustrated like he just opened a bag of Harry Bows and it's all taken by your mates. 3 0, and, well, guess what? I kept the clean sheet, so it literally is the end of the world. The end is nigh! The end is nigh! Run On to an opponent that really hurt us last episode, Swansea City. If we would have got the win out of them, then automatic promotion and we would have been playing in the Premier League. I had to take a revenge on Swansea City. And someone who took that personal was John Swift as he had evil intentions. And that's a thunderbolt of a goal. Literally, the crossbar is still rattling to this day. Opens up the lead for us and with a shocking first goal, Swift decides to return the favour to lint on with an assist. Even though we did get him a nasty injury as Jason suffered a poor case of a Swansea's head in the nuts, that's definitely going to leave a mark. Oh, you got to always protect the McNuggets. While he was getting taken to the back, lint on decided to return the favour to John Swift yet again giving him an assist and well as i said before john swift put the game to rest but with a new season in the championship means new teams including relegated side bournemouth as we travel to sunny bournemouth even though the sun was in our faces we almost were in for a rude awakening as literally that was a close shave but me worried especially since i see linked on mania here on the ball, running in the box, squares it to Kyogo, and he opens up a goal for the baggies. Literally kicking things off. Wait a minute, am I get, I'm getting really mad deja vu. That's only because the same thing happened again. But this time, John Swift was running in the box, lays it across to Kyogo, and well, that's only a second goal for us. And things were working well. Well... When I say working, not my controller. As I tried to pause the game, it wouldn't let me. And the result of all that, Bournemouth did score. Which I did find hilarious. And I wonder why my controller's not working. No, 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 no you freaking left. Oh, you ruined it. You do not blow for full time. When I'm... But was I worried? Nah, not really. As Kyogo in loads of space and he only had one thing to do. Finish him. Yep, he only got a bloody hat-trick against Bournemouth. And I did want to add a little bit of lemon to the wound to Bournemouth as Ryan Christie, their former player, has got a goal past him. And, well, Kyogo left the best to last. As a beautiful cross in and that volley was spectacular. Even though Neto did get a hand to it, Kyogo was absolutely being a menace for us and I enjoyed every single minute of it. But we had to get wins no matter what, especially against Stoke City over here. Are we boys or are we men?
Bloody hell, I only meant that as a motivational speech. The United Nations are calling me over here committing war crimes. But what I did enjoy seeing was the Addicts, Charlton Athletic, a team that meant so much to me, especially being my first career mode on this channel. The first half, it was not good though, as literally a shot from Samuel, and he blasts it over the bar from close range. That was scary, and I'm not just saying that because Halloween's just around the corner. So when the ref blows for the second half, it was game faces on, and especially Kyogo showed no love for my former side. Opening the lead for us as he's absolutely enjoying life at West Brom. Especially even though his shots get saved. Lint on followed up from the rebound to get another goal for us. And what do I always say? Especially when this player on, John Swift? Well, he puts the game to rest. Sorry, Charlton Athletic. But I've got to push on for the promotion fight. And especially with former sides. None other than the Hatters, Luton in town. One of my all-time favourite clubs to manage. This isn't FIFA, this is FC24. And the new era means, well, a new team. With West Brom, we're going well. With a beautiful corner and okay, with another header for us. As the skipper leading from example. But what I was trying to get was extending my lead. As I was piling on the pressure on the Hatters because sooner or later I felt like I was going to slip and well Kevin our centre back did slip leading to a one on one chance and I tried to take him out no good as Luton got an equaliser so we're on 1-1 I need to get a win did I panic since I haven't got Josh Madger no no not at all as I've got Kyogo now the Japanese legend literally getting the lead back for us as well as that scored another one three one as we move on to the live game so do you remember my little list i did right at the beginning when i said i want to beat the best teams in birmingham to become the best well you already noticed that i beat birmingham last season and look who got relegated wolverhampton wanderers another team on my list so today's live game is only going to be one goal in mind beat walls and take them off my list can we do it well with how we've been performing so far i can't see why not throw in right here kenny lobs it long to linton linton you see so far this season has been an absolute menace for defenders and you can see right here plays it across to swift swift drives it round into linton it's a good save onto the post jose sar was at his point and you can't deny it, it was a great save from him samuel Back to OK. OK into Steven. Steven now, the Canadian. Can he spot a pass? I see the run of Linton. Linton, cross it in. Oh, headed didn't go nowhere. But the rebound. Oh, what a goal. Kyogo, what a fantastic strike. This is what he does for crying out loud. What a strike. The header didn't go nowhere since he's pretty much five for nothing. But that rebound shot, god damn. Man, it will make Chris Tucker even impress over that. 1-0 and a brilliant start to the game at the Hawthorns. Jed Wallace, someone who we know very, very too much. Going to be playing at back at the Hawthorns. Now, they're trying to find a gap now. Wolves have still got a lot of threat. We can't underestimate him. And Steven unable to tackle. And Pablo is through. Literally, he's trying to do John. He's done him well. Lays it across. Jed Wallace, that had to be him. No! Oh my god, a former player, Jed Wallace, playing for Wolves, strikes when the iron is hot. Literally, it was going to be easy, it's elementary, you can read it like a book. Lays it across, onside, 1-1. One, one. Free kick to Wolves. Pablo is standing over it. Or maybe not. That's now they're going to, what are they going to do? They're going to take it short? No, it's a dummy. Lays it across. The shot from Matthews Cunha and Anderson. Puts down low with a good save. Okay. Dribbles. Plays it across to Steven. Steven. Back to okay. Okay. Dribbles around. I'm just trying to find the gap. You know, just waiting for my time. It's a lovely through ball to John Swift. The shot didn't go down. A key. Oh. Kyogo's shot is so close. Do you know that? It was so close going in. Wallace on the ball. Come on. Yes. Good tackle from okay from his former teammate. But no. Wolves are playing it around nicely. And now onto the Korean, who's absolutely done. John Joe Kenny plays it across back. 
Matthews Cunha dribbles around fantastically into Jed Wallace, plays it back, 1-2 to the open spot! And Erison was down low and saw the run of play. It was a great save, don't get me wrong, but that is getting too cl close. And Wolves are being very, very dangerous right now. Corner two Wolves themselves. Gonna play it short, are you? Yeah, pretty easy. Now Pablo dribbles round, trying to spot the gap. This is what they're pretty much 90% of gameplay from the CPU. They play it round short like that, and again, oh, Erison with a great save. That's what they always do. They play it short round your box, do a dribble, you're unable to tackle for some stupid reason, and it nearly went in. Plays to Kenny. Kenny threw balls it to Linton. Linton, trying to get, oh, intercepted. Steven, oh, intercepted again. No, not a good mistake. Jed Wallace is on the ball now. He's trying to spot the gap. Trying to spine the pass. Goes for goal and oh my god. After my whole season I played with Jess Wallace. He's never done something like that. But for Wolves he's like bloody Lionel Messi or Slatad. It's just. It's a good goal don't get me wrong. And we're down. That hurts even more. But bloody hell it just had to be Jed freaking Wallace. No come on we're down but we're not out. Still got a lot of the game to go. But then again it could get worse as they're through. Literally. John Joke and he's not doing a great job of marking right here. Twist it, plays across to Jed Wallace, tackled to go nowhere, and he didn't complete his hat trick. Thank goodness for that. I wouldn't hear the end of it. And across in, and Erison is literally trying his best to pull this team together as he's stopping Walls and getting another goal. Plays it back. Okay, let's get him on the counter. This is our bread and butter. Lovely run from Samuel. Samuel, he needs support. He's onside. He goes for it. Oh no! Jose Sarr, it's a fantastic save, but bloody hell. Come on, yes. Linton won the header. Steven now. Come on, cross in. Header, no, that didn't go nowhere. Okay, heads it down. Into Ryan Christie now. Come on, can we perform some magic? The header, no, nowhere. We're trying our best. Wolves are defending with their lives right now. As the backies are continuing their onslaught. Linton, absolutely gets fouled in the box right there. Well, not in the box, sorry, outside the box. <laughs> I need to get my glasses sorted. But uh, is the player going to get punished? Is he going to get a red? I, I just hope for any fit advantage. Nope, it's a yellow card. Fair enough. I just hope for any advantage in my favour. Now, who's got the best free kick? I took an off John Swift. You know what? I might have to do is just lay it across and hope Kiego. Nope, it's going to be okay. You know, Jose Sarr being the real difference maker here as an elite goalkeeper. Steven going to cross this in. Can we do anything? Oh, no! It just crinkled, but it did not go over the line, folks. We're doing everything as possible. Linton, come on. He's gone inside the box for the later cross to Ryan Christie. But how did Jose save it? I do not know. Okay, dribbled shot, and he saved another one, folks. We are literally barricading the through like a police raid, but nothing is working. i got to do everything as I can. Bringing on another striker. Here we come on, gonna get it in. Kenton Melgas! Yes! Gron, the substitute I just brought on. The first touch of the ball, and we made it 2 2. Yeah, get in there, you freaking legend. We rightfully deserve something out of this game, and we've made it level. Full time goes, and. Ah, oh, it's not to be, it's not to be. You know what, I was going to get that red pen out and cross them off the list. But you know what, we've just got to take it as we can. It's a 2-2 draw, we've got a really crucial point. We were very, very, very lucky that we weren't going to lose that game. But you know what, it's just got to be. Let's see how the halfway point goes on the 1st of January. Wow, that table looks good. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm happy that we're first place. And like I said, we haven't even lost a game. That Wolves game, like I said, if that were to continue, we would have lost that game and be our first loss of the season. But no, nope, haven't lost a game yet. First place, I'm happy, but I'm also nervous because last season, in this same predicament, we were second, ready for that automatic promotion fight, and then flick of the old Thanos fingers, we went straight down to playoffs, which I don't want to bring that back again, but that was a disaster. So I'm happy. I might have to make some changes in the January transfer window because, don't get me wrong, this squad has been brilliant. Linton has been fantastic. Kiego has been, literally, Josh Madge has been a thing of the past because he's been taken over like anything. But there's just some improvements I need to make to make this squad ready 
for that final push for that automatic promotion fight and hope we don't lose under pressure. But that's going to be in next episode. Will we get the automatic promotion or will we not? you got to find out in the next one. If you enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Like you said, we upload career modes every Tuesday and Friday. And as always, I'll see you beautiful people later.